Springfield. I'm Dominique Gabriella, and you are watching Behind the Scene. And tonight we have Josh Cates. And thank you so much for being part of the show. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So I want to start off with um, how long have you been singing and doing music in general? Holy cow. Um, for, so I started singing. I was in like a little choir production in elementary school and I, I like got a role in that and then ever since then I've just been singing in the car, singing anywhere I can really. I really, really enjoy singing. It's yeah, yeah it's, it's one of my favorite parts of life for oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, so um, playing guitar and everything, about how long have you been doing that? That, um, I picked up guitar in high school. I found my dad's guitar under his bed and it was, it was kind of a piece of crap. Um, I still have it. Uh, and uh, I, I was messing around on that, like figuring out how to play like melodies and stuff and uh, just sort of teaching myself. And then I got more into it whenever high school happened. I, um, in, in our middle school, you had to choose between band, choir, or art, like for your extracurricular thing. And so I chose band and my uncle had played trumpet. And so we had a trumpet, so I was like, guess I'm playing trumpet. Uh, and so I, I played trumpet all throughout high school, um, was in marching bands, did multiple bands, uh, played it's my senior year, I picked up a uh, tenor saxophone, um, wasn't very good at it, uh, but it was, it was fun to mess around on. Uh, and then, yeah, like just my love of music like blossomed from, from doing all that stuff and like being around those types of people and, and yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the the guitar started in high school, and it was always just an extra thing. And then I was always pushing for trumpet, and um, and then I got to college, and I I was doing a jazz um, jazz degree, and that was that was I was in a little over my head uh, at the time, uh, and I was doing it on trumpet, and. I still think that to this day, if I would have done it on guitar, I probably would have stuck with it and finished it out, but trumpet's just so painful to practice. <laughs> like, it actually shifted the bottom row of my teeth. Oh because, my God, I didn't know that yeah, happened. because of pushing so hard. Uh -huh. Like, I, my technique wasn't the greatest, so, uh -huh. like, my, my professor always got all over me about it. <laughs> like, it was funny, I would always play trumpet off to the side, because yeah. whenever you play, or whenever you're looking at a trumpet, like, the, the mouthpiece is like is here and then the rest of the horn is off to the left so I had like moved the whole horn in the center of my face so I like played off to the side and so like my teeth are kind of like curved now <laughs> <laughs> just from like pushing the mouthpiece in yeah but uh yeah I really think I would have stuck with it if I if I had done it on guitar because I, I I love playing guitar I like it just feels so much better to play I, I still love playing trumpet don't get me wrong but yeah I um, as many as I can get my hands on. Yeah, I really, really like um, messing around. I, uh, in high school, I was also on the winter drum line, so I, I was, I started out, I, oh, I started out, I really wanted to be in winter drum line because a bunch of my friends were in it, and um, I was like, okay, well, I, like, I can't play drums right now, you know, so um, I, I tried out for it to be an actor. In, the, in in there, and I, I, I got cut. <laughs> but then they brought me back halfway through the season, and uh, I got my lines on the bus. And it was like the I remember it. I remember it this day. It was it was about the book 1984. Yeah. And I, and yeah yeah. And I was like I was the like totalitarian leader, and I had this huge page of words to read. They gave me on the bus on the way to our first competition. So I had never done it before, and like I get up there and. Like I'm, I'm pretty bad with like memorizing words and stuff. That's not my strong suit, and so I, uh, I get up there and I just like it's, it's just this vamp over a chord that the, the percussion's doing, and I'm just like, just mumbling like for a good minute and a half, and it was one of the most embarrassing moments of my life. Oh my God. <laughs> but, but after that, I, uh, I was a chimes player, and then my junior and senior year, I marched snare. So I learned a lot of, like, took the time, learned a lot of rudiments and stuff like that, the basics of drum stuff, and I had a lot of help from friends, too, which was really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, lo I, I love just, like, figuring out how different instruments work and trying to get them to make the sounds that I want them to make. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. Ah, that's really cool. So how, uh, are you from Springfield originally? <laughs> no, I'm... How long have you been playing here in Springfield? I am from O'Fallon, Missouri. It's a little town like 45 minutes outside of Spring or of uh, St. Louis, and um, I moved here um, right after high school to go to college to go to Missouri State, mm -hmm. and um, 
then I, we actually met um, Eldon uh, through the jazz program. He was an upright bass player. We were in a combo together. And I was like, you, do you want to be in a metal band? <laughs> and I like, you know, thinking it wouldn't go anywhere. But he was like, uh, yeah. And then, you know, like 10 years later, we're still doing it. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, let's get to the bands um, that you're in. What, what bands? I mean, I know you do mm. your solo stuff. And what other kind of bands have you been in since you've been here in Springfield? So, um... I've been in, i pretty much just been loyal to the one band, like I've, like, lo and behold has been, we started in high school, um, me, Chase, and Alex, like, started in high school, and then, um, we moved out to Springfield, Chase was still in high school, like, so we were, like, it, the, you know, working through uh, three of us being here, and Chase being in St. Louis, so most of our shows were in St. Louis, it was taking us forever to get shows out here, because we didn't know anybody, mm -hmm. um, and then we met Seth Keen. Um, who's a, a big promoter around town, and he gave us our first show. Um, I remember uh, Chase was still in St. Louis, and he had messaged our group chat, and he was like, hey, Silent Planet's coming to town, and like the guy that works with them like book shows in Springfield. And he's like, we should go to the show, and like, I, well, obviously Silent Planet rules, too, so it was like, you know, we get to go see a cool show. Um, but like, it was also, that was where we met um, Seth, and, and we actually we got asked to play that show. So like Seth got to see us play and then he was like, we we're like, hey, we're in Springfield, you know, like we would love to play some shows out there. And he's like, cool, we got some shows for you. So mm -hmm. it's like worked out really, really, really well. <laughs> That's really awesome. So with your band, um, do you have any albums out? Mm -hmm. um, we've got an EP out that we recorded a very long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've just been releasing like singles here and there and our latest single is talk which i, I think we'll hear a little bit later mm -hmm. um and uh that's like we've we've moved kind of our our likes have changed as we've gotten older because i mean you know you do anything in high school like do you remember anything you did in high school right like do you no. feel do you feel the same way you felt in high right. school no not no of course not <laughs> so it's like our our music tastes have changed and like the things that we enjoy playing has changed and yeah it's cool to see the band evolve that way mm -hmm. like and we're we're putting more of ourselves into it i think in the beginning you know when you're you're young you're like you're still exploring the things that you enjoy and the things that you like doing mm -hmm. and uh yeah we we were a hardcore band a metal band for a while and now we're kind of like easing off and getting older yeah, <laughs> so i guess things yeah out. things are chilling out yeah <laughs> like i don't want to have to jump around all the time you know? <laughs> yeah exactly i'm getting old i'm getting old what are you gonna what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah yeah so you were telling me um, off camera about this album art and, and the recording mm -hmm. with this band. Like, can you share a little bit more of that? Yeah, so um, we were very interested in making a video for this because, you know, it's nice to have videos for your music because people like watching stuff. And so, like, I was thinking, and we were, we were talking about it, and it was like, it would be really cool if we had, if we had set up the album art and we thought up of like a scene to go along with the song for the album art. So it's like essentially just live album art, a video of like what's actually ha happening in that picture you see whenever you listen to the song. So Chase is an incredible videographer. Um, Alex's girlfriend is the hand in the video and Alex, Chase and uh, Lisa all shot that together. Um, and they like Chase went out and bought all the stuff for it and then like set up the shoot and that it just shot it in our house and it turned out great. Well, um, I know that we'll show that clip somewhere in here, but that I. I when I took a look at um, your fan page and your just personal page, I'm just amazed by your voice and your talent. It is really cool, and it's it's very awesome to have you here in Springfield amongst all of all of the music community. Thank you so much. So that is really awesome. So I know that you do other things besides play the music as part of the uh, community. What else do you do? Um, I'm an audio engineer. Yeah. Um, I I really like the back end of music things, you know, like pr production and like 
creating a show for people. Like whenever whenever you go to a show, you don't just want to hear music. You want to see a show, you know, and you want to like you want to you want to really feel it. So like a lot of that comes into like the the extras that people put into it. So like all the the extra art things and like the the set design and um, and you know the audio is super important. So um, I had taken some uh, recording arts classes in college and that just like sprung everything into action. And then um, I was like, man, I don't really have any other like in, like incredible things that I want to do, you know, with like with my skill set, like my skill set's kind of weird. I, I I have a very interesting skill set that doesn't bode well for getting a desk job anywhere. <laughs> yeah. um, and I was like, well, what could I do? I could you know work on the production side. So I got an internship with a venue called The Riff that's in town um, with Nick Kreider, who it, he taught me everything I know. He is one of the most learned people that I've met. Just like insanely like a, a huge wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. and um it was incredible like studying under him seeing how he ran things and like I, I still take a lot of the lessons that he taught me today um to different locations um and i've just been kind of like contracting and working where i can and then the outland picked me up and now i'm working full time there and it's been it's been really cool awesome yeah. so do you record your own solo stuff um, I, I record my, we, re, we record our demos, mm -hmm. so, um, we'll, we'll track everything out, like, get all the parts to where we want them, and then we'll go to somebody who, like, really knows what they're doing. Um, uh, our last two, so Lean is, um, the newest song out from Vivid, and then Talk is the newest song out from Lo and Behold, and we went to, uh, Spire Studios, which is just, like, right above Jimmy John's, mm -hmm. and, um, the, the engineer that works there, Michael Palmquist, is an incredible audio engineer, uh, really good to work with, really fun, like we just, we vibed, and, and it was, it was just, it was a good matchup, and like, yeah, he, he did an incredible job bringing, like, bringing more clarity to, like, what we had envisioned in our heads, so it's like, we, we put the parts together, and then he makes them sound incredible, mm. so that's like, it's like yeah it feels like a, a good team like yeah awesome um so let's go back to your your solo stuff now uh you said you go by what on the internet vivid vivid yeah mm -hmm. vivid. and how did you come up with that uh well i had gone through a few different names and even thinking about just you know going as me josh cates and then i was like well people i want something easy for people to understand you know because you know lo and behold i can't tell you how many times i've told people that they're like what's your band's name I'm like lo and behold they're like what <laughs> and i'm like lo and behold and then they're like l-o-w and like no l-o l-o and then so it's just this weird thing where i have to describe and like yeah. i'm already uncomfortable like talking about that stuff too yeah. like Short, sweet, yeah easy to the point. yeah okay. it's like vivid it's like I, that just popped into my head one day and it was like the things that I do like I like to do I, I like to have the way I look at music especially like my music and and other music is it's soundtracks to like a movie basically like you know you want to tell a story you want you want the the person listening to it to feel something to imagine something to like have an idea in their head and like I want that to be as vivid as possible, and then and that's just where it is. That is beautiful. Yeah. So let's talk about your first song that we're gonna hear. Yeah. Um, a little bit about that song. It is. Um, this is this is the one we recorded, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this song is called Affordable, um, and I wrote it like during this last year, mm -hmm. and. I know a lot of a lot of my friends in the entertainment industry, and yeah, yeah, we're we're just like really hurting for a long time um, because everything that we once knew we couldn't do anymore, and like for the people that were attempting to make that their life, like it just ruined everything, you know. Like if if you don't hear a band or or think about a band, you know it's gone like think about how many like whenever i listen to music now i don't listen to all of the old music i used to listen to i forget about all that stuff and then i'm listening to whatever i'm listening to now you know so it's it it, it was really tough like 
not only motivational wise, but like to actually get out and do it, you know, and like keep creating the whole time. And affordable was just the idea in my head that, you know, not everything is about like not success isn't equivalent to the amount of money you have or you know what you're doing it's 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 the fulfillment you get out of your life and and i wrote affordable like from the perspective of a father talking to their child and like yeah we may not be able to to afford all these crazy things but we've got enough to get by and that's all that matters so wow. beautiful so we're going to get to that song and we will be right back We are back. That is such a beautiful song. Thank really, you. Really, really enjoyed Thank you that. very much. Um, so, who are some of your influences? Oh, uh, really all over the place. A, a really big one um, ever since high school was Dallas Green. 
Um, he was in a band called Alexis on Fire, and he started his solo project, uh, City and Keller, which is like pretty much the exact same route that I kind of took. Like Alexis on Fire was this really angsty, like, like kind of hardcore band, and they had really like Dallas's voice is just so pretty, like, and the idea of putting something like, you know, that like one would call, you know, like with screaming in it, like screaming, and then like the pretty side of things, it's like, that felt like, like covering the whole scope of what music could be in my head at that point in time. And then I was also doing acoustic stuff on the side, so I was like, this guy, and my voice, I couldn't find anybody whose voice matched mine, like, fairly close right. um, until him. And then I was like, okay, well, this feels really natural. This feels like a good, like, a good thing to kind of model myself after and then like and then expand upon that mm -hmm. so Dallas was a huge influence for me like with from everything with with his acoustic guitar his finger picking style I watched a bunch of videos and just saw how he was doing things and tried to mimic him as closely as possible mm -hmm. and um, yeah that was that was huge um, and I, I I also really like uh, Dave Brubeck, mm -hmm. um, who's a pianist. Mm -hmm. uh, he was an incredible composer. He had a quartet that I've just, you know, worn out the vinyl that I have of listening to. Um, he, I, I studied him a lot. He he traveled a bunch, and so he got to see all of these different places in the world and pick up on different cultural influences. Mm -hmm. And you hear that throughout his music. He made it. He made those types of cultural influences palpable to larger masses, which I always found really reputable and res like. I, I really respected him for that. Mm -hmm. There, there are a lot of really cool stories in the jazz scene that just have been passed down by word of mouth. Um, he, he was also a good human being, which I really like to take into account whenever I'm checking out new artists. Um, it's important that they treat other people well for me. Yeah. Um, I, there, there's like, there's one story about Dave. Um, his bass player, his name is Eugene Wright, and he was, he was a black man, and they were on this college circuit. So they were playing at all these different colleges, and it was back, I want to say back in the 20s or 30s, so things were pretty, you know, not great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not to say they're great now. But, yeah, right. Um, but he, they, they had gotten to this college, and uh, the person that was putting on the show said, um, yeah, Eugene, he, he can't be on stage. And, and Dave was like, he's the bass player. He has to be on stage. He's going to be on stage. And they're like, okay, well, you have to put him in back. Like, he has to be behind the piano. And, and Dave was finally like, all right, that's fine, you know, like, you know, you can only argue so much with somebody. Right. So, uh, so he was like, okay. And then they, they start performing, and uh, <laughs> mid-performance, Dave's like, hey, Eugene, I don't think your mic's working too well. Could you come stand up in front of the piano? <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> yeah, so it's just like a huge, like, uh, fuck well, you. That was awesome yeah. of him. Yeah. Just like put my, my person back there. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, like, you know, small things like that were, are so cool to me and like hearing all that like the rich history of everything and yeah it's it's cool seeing the human side of people and i think music brings that out a lot of the time yeah absolutely now in your own writing how how do you go through the process the writing process some advice you could give to other inspiring you know music writers other people just yeah. write as much as possible mm -hmm. um a big thing that i like to do is i'll have a guitar part that i really like and it'll make me feel something, and then I'll sit on that for a little while and like think about what it, like how how it makes me feel and the words that come to mind, and I'll just sing random melodies over the top of it, like trying to pick the best one that I think works the best, that flows the best, that transitions from part to part the best, and then usually the words come from me just singing random stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then once I have that small spark of an idea, then I can kind of expand upon that and then make the whole, whole song. And then once I get that, then I'll start adding in like little things that I hear of like different kind of instrumentation or, um, you know, different 
like beats and stuff and um, yeah it's 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 a very loose process mm -hmm. I would say and inspiration comes from anywhere that you are looking for it mm -hmm. um, what's the weirdest uh, thing that's inspired you to write a song uh, the weirdest thing um, it's not a, very common yeah I, I don't know if I have okay well we're working on a song right now um, Alex is one of Alex's favorite bands is Nirvana and the like the way Lo and Behold's going now is kind of like more towards a rock rock jazz still kind of heavy sometimes but you know with like <laughs> only only sometimes though um, but I one thing that I was really stuck on especially since the pandemic had happened is like making sure my lyrics meant something like it was important to me to to make sure that I was saying something of substance that you know could potentially make someone think in a different way that they haven't thought before or question something that they do or question something that's happening around them and make them see like oh this is like can I curse on this? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is kind of <laughs> fucked up. Like, yeah. this is kind of fucked up, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, so I, I wrote this other song, and it, the lyrics don't really make sense very much. And that's, that was weird for me. So, like, I purposefully didn't want them to make a whole bunch of sense. Um, but th that was, like, sort of an exercise for me to kind of take a little less stock in the things that I do. Like, I, I think... put as an artist, pushing yourself to do things that are uncomfortable is important. Mm -hmm. And that was really uncomfortable for me. And that, that's probably the weirdest thing that I've done. Most of the time I usually write to personal experience mm -hmm. and, and the things that I've gone through. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So um, you, I'm sure you've toured around. And, uh, what, what cities have you toured around? Any oh. big ones? Um, a lot of the Midwest. We've been to Texas a lot. Um, I am terrible with remembering where we've gone. Um, usually, I'm a little out of it <laughs> yeah. uh, for for most of the time. Yeah. Uh, um, a few a few places that really come to mind um, are definitely Texas. We've we've spent a lot of time in Texas. Um, we we go there with our friends uh, Polterguts from St. Louis. They're an incredible band. Go check them out. Um, we went on a tour called the Midwest Throwdown Tour with a bunch of bands from Springfield, or, or well, two of us from Springfield, um, a band from Indianapolis uh, called Pickwick Commons. The other band from Springfield was uh, Cavill, um, and Polterguts was there, and Zion was there. So we were all from like different locations, mm -hmm. and we we had all been like we'd become friends because uh, you know we were all kind of playing the same music, and it was like, hey, we're all from these separate areas. Why don't we plan a tour with all of our bands and play each of our hometowns? So that way we can get all the people that we know out to see you guys, and vice versa. So it was like it was a really good. I'd say that was like our most well thought out tour we've ever had. Most of the other ones are just like, well, we should probably go on tour. <laughs> yeah. We should probably go play for people, you know. Um, and the so so that went really well. Um, the 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 one that really comes to mind uh, was Rockford, Illinois. Um, we played a venue called Disaster House, and whenever you book your own tours, you don't. Most of the time, you're just reaching out to people. Like, if, if you don't have a name built up for yourself, if you don't have a ridiculous Spotify or Instagram or face space following, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they, they want to see that, you know, you can bring people. And if you don't have proof of that, then you just kind of take whatever you get. Mm -hmm. um, so in the beginning, it was, it was tough. It's still tough, but in the beginning, it was tough. So we were just taking, like, house shows and anywhere we could play in front of people. Um, and Disaster House was one of those places. Um, it was in Rockford, Illinois, and uh, the <laughs> we pull up to this place. It was in a pretty rough neighborhood, and um, we were with Poltergeist, and we get there, and you walk in, and the first thing you see is dishes just stacked to the ceiling oh, wow. that look like like they've been there for you yeah. know months. Yeah, um, there's spray paint all over the walls. Um, 
and then you know the further you get into this building yeah. the further you find out about it and um i had never seen anything like that before and i believe there were 12 people living there and there were nine dogs Whoa. yeah oh my god no wonder the name of this place yeah it's been shut down since well that's good yeah. um, <laughs> but just that was a really really eye-opening experience for me because like the, some of the stories that I heard there, yeah. like yeah, I, could, I couldn't repeat. Yeah. Um, some of the stuff that I saw, like people doing some real hard drugs. Oh, um, that's crazy. Yeah. Just this and yeah. Like, yeah. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we played in the basement, which had like this huge tunnel that you had to yeah. take to get down, and then it was like the microphone cord was strung through this like the banister in the ceiling, and then like I kept getting shocked by the microphone and. <gasps> Yeah, it was it was a rough one. We've had some rough shows, wow. um, but like those are the most fun because you get the most stories from them too. Um, the other one that really comes to mind uh, is Biloxi, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. We played. Well, I guess we didn't play Biloxi. We were traveling to Georgia. This was a tour with a band called Starving the South, which we're really really good friends with. They're um, they're based out of Branson, Missouri. They're like a every time I die kind of band, um, and. They, uh, we had our van, we had a rented trailer, <clears throat> and we had just woken up in a Loves, and it was like 102 degrees, like we were all just sweating our asses off, it was so hot, we didn't have, well, like I hadn't figured out the air conditioning thing yet, which I can talk about if you want, <laughs> uh, then I like wake up, walk into the loves. Chase and Alex are awake already. I, I'm like, all right, we should probably get on the road. We got to get to Georgia for our next show. It was our last show on, on the run. And, um, we, <laughs> we get in the van and we start driving. And, um, the, the other guys were behind us and we're driving and the car's not getting over 40 miles per hour. And we're like, well, shit, like what is happening right now? And so, we call them and we're like, hey, like, uh, Courtright is the guitarist and, and he's like pretty good with car stuff. So like, hey, our car is not getting over 40 miles per hour. Like, do you know what could possibly be going on? And he was like, yeah, yeah, you should pull. Like, we should we should stop. And he's he was like, there's a there's a GMC which we have a GMC. He's like, there's a GMC like right up the road, like right up this highway if you take this next exit. So we take this exit and Alex is driving. And he drives over the overpass, which the the GMC was on the other side of the highway. So we drove over the overpass for no reason. And then we had to turn around. And when we turn around, like it's kind of like a it was like a hump overpass too. So it was like yeah. pretty hilly. And we're like on this side of it, and an it just stops. Oh, no. Like our van just stops. So it's not working anymore. And we have like all of our gear in this this U-Haul trailer and our van. It's 100 and whatever degrees out, midday Biloxi, Mississippi. We're sweating our asses off, and we are like, all right, we have to push it. Because <laughs> we're not paying for a tow for something that we can see. Like, that's so, yeah, and we were also super poor, too. So, wow. like, I don't want to mess around with that. So, we, we are, like, trying to get it up this hill, and there was six of us. We had six of us in the van, and then we had uh, other guys, and Corey was like, I'll just, I'll just drive into the back of your U-Haul. I was like, don't drive into the back of the U-Haul. Like, we'll just push it. So we're, we're pushing it. We finally get to the GMC. I hadn't showered in a while, so I was like, screw this. I'm fucking showering, and I, like, go into the thing, and I get my shampoo and conditioner out of the van, and, like, just walk into the bathroom and start washing my hair in the sink. <laughs> And then uh, the one of the workers came in and he was like, hey, "Man, you can't, you can't be in here." I like, I'm pretty sure he thought I was homeless. homeless, and I was like, "Bro, my <laughs> van is in your garage right now." <laughs> like, I'm gonna finish washing my hair. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and so we're just waiting around, and they they ended up telling us like, "Yeah, it was your transmission," and we're like, "That is not what we wanted to hear." Wow. So. Um, Do you like a GoFundMe or anything? No, that has never been our cup of tea. Yeah. Like we've. We've just, I don't know why. I, I don't think any less of people that use that. I think it's a really great resource for people. Um, but we were just like, yeah, we, we have family and stuff to fall back on. You know, we don't want to, like, push our fans, mm -hmm. you know, make our fans. So did you, you make know, it to your, to your gig, though? No. So <laughs> the story's not even over yet. Oh There's God. still much more of the story yeah. to happen. So we leave our van there, 
we had to get our U-Haul back, right? Yeah. So we were thinking like, okay, well, we got to get our U-Haul on their van, and then we leave their trailer with our van, yeah. and then eventually come get our van and the trailer. Uh, so we switch all the stuff, take the bed out of their van, put it into their trailer, take all of our shit, or all of their shit out of their tra trailer and put it into the U-Haul, hook the U-Haul up to the van, and then we loaded 12 guys into this van. And then we started the 10-hour journey back to Springfield, Missouri. Oh so we're all sitting in this van just uh, having a good old time, honestly. Like, you know, there, there's a point where things happen on tour and you're like, well, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, mm -hmm. this is just stupid. Like, I, like you know, this, it couldn't get any worse. So it's like, you know, it's fine. <laughs> uh, so we are driving. I think we make it to somewhere around like Arkansas, maybe. And um, it's like two in the morning and Courtright is a monster. So he's just doing the whole drive himself. Yeah. Like he doesn't want anybody else to drive. He's like, he's the daddest person I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's like, He's driving. I'm sitting behind him. Like everybody else is in the back of the van. Like kind of, some people are asleep. Yeah. And I like look to my left, and we're on this bridge. Yeah. And there's nowhere to stop on this bridge. Like you can't pull off. You have to just finish the bridge. Yeah. And we're on this bridge. I look to the left, and there's this dude in this truck, like freaking the fuck out. Like, like oh, trying to wave us down. And I was like, I like tap cord on his shoulder. And I'm like, hey, this guy's trying to get our attention. And he's like. Uh, he rolls down the window, and the guy's like, there's shit falling out of your trailer. Oh, no. <laughs> and, like, we're all just simultaneously like, fuck. And then, like, we can't stop because we're on this, this you know, this yeah. thing, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning. There's, like, cars traveling, and, like, we stop, finally get to the end of the bridge. Like, a few of us get out. Yeah. Me and Dylan start sprinting down this bridge to try and see if anything had fallen out on this bridge, yeah. like, that we could, you know, potentially save before yeah. it gets destroyed. And so, like, we're sprinting, we're sprinting, we're sprinting, and it's pitch black, not really lit very well. Um, and I see this, like, big piece of metal, like, laying up against the side where the walkway is for the bridge. And I, like, we're running, and, like, we've just got our phone lights out, and, like, Dylan almost runs into it. And it was this manhole cover that had been lifted up, and it was just straight down oh. to, like, cement. And I was like, oh my god, I did like the mom stop thing, wow. so Dylan didn't run into it. And I was like, okay, we almost lost stuff, and he almost died. Uh, and then we finally get to the end of the bridge, and like my brand new foot pedal that I had just bought for that tour, and my book bag, and all my cords, was just laying in the road, oh, completely destroyed. Destroyed, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, along with um, a toolbox from one of the Starving the South guys, and then um, one of the other guys' backpacks. So... In all fairness, it could have been much, much worse. You know, yeah. we got out of the van and we saw... We're all alive. Yeah, yeah, we're all alive. <laughs> uh, only three things fell out of the trailer. Um, and, like, you know, it could have been, like, you know, you look at the yeah. trailer and you're like, okay, I can't really tell anything's gone, but yeah. I'm still nervous. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it could have been so much worse. Wow. But that was a, a trip. Wow, that sounds like it. So, you know, the joys of touring. Yep. <laughs> so what are some uh, things you learned from touring that uh, you would give advice to somebody that's never toured before? Um, I would say pitch in, get a membership to Planet Fitness. Like if you get, if you get one of those uh, like black memberships, mm -hmm. then uh, two people, you can get a friend in. So we had six people with us, so three of us got it, and then we would get the other three in. And showering on tour is a game changer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you're, it's midsummer and you're, you're all sweating your asses off so and it just smells disgusting. So we just go to the gym at night. It's a place for us to park. It's a place for us to shower. Yeah. It's a place for us to, like, kind of recoup a little bit. Um, it's like a home base, and they have one in, like, every city. So, oh, wow. yeah, that's a huge recommendation, wow. first of all. That would be killer. Yeah. Sponsor me. <laughs> that, that is, that's some really good advice right yeah. there. So uh, who books your tours? Do you or do you get a um, site source? For the longest time, um, Dylan was doing it for us, and then uh, he kind of moved on. Um, and now Lane Lane has been doing it for us. We, we met both those guys in college, and they were, like, really excited about our music. And mm -hmm. um, another piece of advice, I would say, yeah. is start like build a team like find people that you trust people that 
people that believe in what you're doing and that have different skill sets than you because as much as you want to believe that you can, you can't do it all. Yeah. Like, you cannot do it all. You can do a little bit of it. You can, you can get through it, but the more help you get, the better it is. Like, people are definitely way more powerful with other people. That is true. Let's get to your next song, and we'll come mm. back. So let's talk about a little bit about this one. Yes. Um, I believe this one is called Mem- Mesmerized. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is, is uh, really near and dear to my heart because... Um, I recorded it while I was on the cruise. Um, so I had worked on a cruise for six months. Um, I was a cruise director. Um, I was in charge of all the entertainment on the cruise. Um, there was a band. I was in the band. I was playing guitar, singing, and playing trumpet. Um, there was a drummer, singer, and then there was a pianist, violinist, uh, vocalist. So it was us three, kind of in charge of everything on the ship. Uh, the ship was called Victory One. And uh, we went up into Canada and the U.S., so uh, I got to see a lot of really cool places. I got to meet a lot of really cool people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to perform three times a day for six months with no breaks. Wow. Um, So this song came out of of this? Yeah, yeah. I I started working on it, and then um, I had come up with the idea in Texas while we were on tour to... I was so, I would say, lo and behold and vivid, like as a problem, uh, we we spend too much time working on things. Like that that was another thing that I had noticed about us. Like we're we're gonna work on it. We'll probably work it to death before we release it. So I wanted something where I could just go, like record something and then it's done. So that I came up with the idea for the one take videos. Um, and since I travel so much, it was like, well, I'll find cool locations, I'll just set up a camera, I'll record a song, and then it's something I can just send out, you know? Um, so, on the cruise, um, we went to Mackinac Island, which is, like, right around, uh, I believe Minnesota, I might be wrong on that, I'm terrible with geography. Um, but it's this little island where no cars are allowed and it's just like there's a bunch of horses and buggies and people are riding bicycles and it's just this it's this yeah it's this it's really just this wonderland like that is crazy that exists i mean it smells like horse shit but you know (laughs) what are you gonna do (laughs) they do a really good job of cleaning it up but um they have this hotel on there that's called the uh i believe just the grand hotel and it's this ridiculously nice hotel, um, but everywhere outside of the hotel is this really lush wildlife, and they have this place called the Secret Garden, and uh, as you'll see in the video, like it's just like beautiful. They they tend it all the time. It's just a, f- a r- river of flowers with this little tiny bridge over the top of it, and I was like, that would be perfect to shoot one of these videos for. So I hiked my happy little ass with my guitar without a case <laughs> all the way to this thing from the ship and like took two iPhones. I like borrowed my uh, my roommate's iPhone, Sam, uh, and I used one for the audio and one for the video. And surprisingly, no one walked in front of me or oh. around me the whole time. That's awesome. Yeah, and because uh, uh, in, in the... In one of my other one take videos, uh, you'll see there's this lady that walks right in front of me. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, but oblivious. Yeah, it, it's crazy because it looks fake. The video looks fake. It doesn't it's look fake. like it's real. Oh, yeah. Wow. It looks like a green screen. Yeah. You know, with some but you're props right in, in the front. Middle of it. I'm just right yeah. in the middle of it, and I, I promise it's real. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna get to that, and we will be right back.
Yeah. Uh, when you sent it to me over <laughs> um, over our message, I'm like, hmm, <laughs> this yeah. is interesting. Yeah, done on a green screen. So. <laughs> it was, it was it's really also too much cool. work for me. I'll just take a couple of cameras and yeah, just shoot yeah. it there. I mean, I think it's cool, you know, going different places on locations. Yeah, you and your music, that's really cool. So um, now, what kind of differences do you see in Springfield? than you saw, you know, on your travels, you know, when you're touring? Mm -hmm. Is there certain things about Springfield that has, um, that's actually made it an easier place to play than the other places that you've played before? I would say Springfield, at least for the genre of music that we played for the longest time with, with Lo and Behold, there were so many artists coming through here that fit that bill, you know, which was really nice because there was always these large national touring acts that were coming through and it was like we were able to jump on because of Seth. And uh, that was like really, really helpful for us. Um, and the, the community of Springfield, people really care about what happens here, which is nice to see. Um, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've been to, you know, little venue dives in tiny towns, um, but th this is a, it's like a medium-sized town, right? Right. So it's harder to, you know, everybody doesn't know each other by name, you know, all that stuff. So there's a lot of things that go on here that people don't know about. And I, like one thing that I would like to see have happen is like more intermingling of the different genres. Because, like, you know, you have, like, you've got metal shows going on, you've got funk shows going on, you've got acoustic shows going on, you've got, like, spoken word stuff, you've got comedy going on, and, like, and you see this at these open mic nights, and you're like, wow, there's a lot of talent here, there's a lot of cool stuff going on, and it's, it seems, it, you know, and this happens everywhere, too, but, like, people get in their little niches, and then it just stays that way, so I, that's one thing that I'd like to have happen around here. Because I think it would help everybody, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, people are more powerful people. We mm -hmm. talked about it earlier. So are you saying like having like a variety show where there's more than just one genre of music? Yeah. And I, I had even talked to the guys about this too. I was mm -hmm. like, I would like to like, you know, what's stopping us from having a comedian open for us one time, like whenever we have our first show back, mm -hmm. like, or having a rapper open for us or, you know, something that people wouldn't expect. Like normally we just have hardcore bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's like. And every time I go to a show, I don't know about anybody else, but like if I'm hearing the same thing over and over and over again, I'm gonna get kind of bored of it. Mm -hmm. Like even if it's the best music in the world, like if you're hearing the same thing over and over again, it's gonna get tiring, especially if it's like five hours. And you're just like, oh my gosh. Yeah, and it introduces the you know the music to fans of the other artists that yeah. you might have never heard. Exactly, and it's like I don't know how much crossover there is mm -hmm. between people who like those genres, but. Like, I know I like multiple genres, so mm -hmm. I would assume other people do as well. Yeah, so it's like, do. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, it would be cool to have, a, like, you know, you go to a show and you're like, got this rap artist, got this comedian, got this mm -hmm. metal band, got this rock band. And it's like, wow, that was like a really rounded out show. Like, I feel like I experienced a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which... So what other um, kind of things do you feel like Springfield has that uh, other places don't? Um, our venues are really good, I would say. Our venues really take care of the performers. Um, they have invested a lot of time and effort and money into making these places comfortable to play at and like have a good product. Like I love working at the Riff and Outland uh, because they have good gear. You know, like it's easy to make people sound good on quality gear. So 
even even just that like let alone mm -hmm. but like all the renovations that the outland has done like how nice the riff is mm -hmm. like yeah it's just yeah it's it's cool to see our venues putting stock into the artists mm -hmm. and like giving giving them a place you know that's really cool you don't see that everywhere yeah so is there anything that you wish during field that, that did have that you've seen other places Hmm. It's tough because most of the time when we go to these places, we spend like five hours in right. in it, and then we're on to the next one. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. It's also tough because you know I haven't really seen much in the past year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I haven't really seen a whole lot. Um, I guess. I mean, people are pretty excited about shows here. We just we have a good we have a good community for music. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's hard to let people know. I think maybe if there was a way to get directly to the people that cared about what was happening downtown, because mm -hmm. I can't, can't tell you how many times like we've had shows and stuff where people are like, I didn't even know you were having a show. And it's like, well, shit. I mean. I tried well, that's to. Why I tried to tell everybody. Yeah, we yeah. We have our list that we post every week. Everybody, <laughs> if you have not seen our list, you need to because it has every single day what's going on around town. So yeah, it's kind of amazing that people don't realize how mm -hmm. many shows are around. I mean, that's the whole reason why we exist. Yeah. Um, Which just, thank you for. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. And, and also, you know, just to to support musicians in general because guys need a voice not just being up there on stage you know getting to know the person behind mm -hmm. the music is really important i feel um so have you done any street performing here in springfield yet um so because i don't I think really see one... that much street performers here than i have in other towns that i have been to yeah there's there's a weird there's some weird barriers to entry mm -hmm. so i i and I don't know 100%, but I believe there are some things you have to get before you can legally play on the street. Oh, here in Springfield. I believe so. Wow. Um, I know that's like that in some places. I know it's yeah. like that in some places. I'm not sure if it's like that here in Springfield, mm -hmm. but I would assume it would be kind of along the same lines. Mm -hmm. um, I have played on the street before. Like we've had we've had uh, a couple of shows at the Outland where we've gone out and like tried to sell tickets on the street, like right out in front of the Outland and I'd bring a guitar and I'd just we'd just be messing around and like, hey we're having a show if you wanna come, you know, we've got tickets if you wanna go. Mm -hmm. Um, stuff like that. Um, but never never directly just like, you know, mm -hmm. trying to play and get tips and stuff out on the street. But I um, I did get to go to New York uh, a few times mm -hmm. through college. Uh, I was in uh, the big band in college and we would always go with the, de the theater department because they would have their their showcase for mm -hmm. all of the alumni and all the folks that are on Broadway now that are from Missouri State and we were the backing band for all of the performers. Yes. So we just got to go hang out in New York for a week. Um, and I, I got to meet some of the performers. Like we would, you know, go on the subways and like I was talking to people and like there's some crazy talented people that play in the subways. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, they're like, we make pretty good money doing it. And I was wow. like, that's really rad. Like that's really <laughs> rad. <laughs> I never would have thought like, you know, I mean, and I guess it adds up too. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's a really cool thing to see. I, and I have seen people playing like downtown Springfield too. You just like in the little coves, mm -hmm. like alcoves. It's it's neat. Mm -hmm. It's nice walking the into a town. And the, yeah, because yeah. you could hear. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that to come back. It's gonna Me be too. Warm yeah, it's gonna be nice. So, yeah, out. it's gonna start doing. Yeah. It was seventy degrees today. <laughs> I know. Just a week ago, it was yeah. negative. Yep. <laughs> Welcome go. to Missouri. Yep. So uh, let's talk about etiquette. I mean. Working in venues yourself and you know traveling around, what are some things that stick out that just irk you um, about musicians and venues? Okay, all right, I gotta empty out the dirty laundry here. Yeah, it's going to go the other way afterwards. So, okay, you know. all right. Uh, well, from but no names or anything like that, of course. <laughs> from a musician standpoint, um, take care of your gear. 
like take care of your gear nobody likes to see like a whole bunch of messed up stuff up on stage you don't like and you know i'm probably the last person to say that because we've had so many technical difficulties uh like take care of your gear as much as you can (laughs) like like shit's gonna happen but uh but like take care of your gear if you're using somebody else's gear treat that gear better than you treat your own gear like that i think is super imperative like um from a artist to vent or venue to artist standpoint artists treat the venue nice like it's they they're there to help you don't 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 mess with the venue don't break stuff don't like purposely be an asshole like nobody likes assholes Mm -hmm. you know so just yeah yeah don't do that um don't spill drinks on stuff yeah that happens a lot spilling drinks spilling drinks is (laughs) yeah spilling drinks is real bad um just be nice, man. I mean, you know, treat people well. Uh, the sound guy's there for you. Like, he's working for you. Like, at least, you know, the ones that I've come across. Yeah. Like, if you're nice to them, they're going to be nice to you. Yeah, you're going to get a. Don't piss off the sound yeah, guy. Yeah, don't guys. piss off the sound guy. Don't. Don't. Do don't, don't. He has control. Of yeah, the I can make you sound terrible. <laughs> if I wanted to. I wouldn't, but I could. Uh, yeah, it's. I think it's super important to have like good relationships with the people that you work with because I mean even if you work with them for a day you know that's still a day's worth of work that could go horribly wrong so like if you're having a bad day just put it away man like be nice like ask them how they're doing be be human (laughs) you know Um, talk to the venue owner like make those connections because that's important like people like being around people that are fun to be around you know, I don't want to be around someone that's a jerk to me. Right. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to be around that person, right. you know. Um, don't mess with your cool vibe. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, don't mess with other people's vibes yeah, either. Yeah. Like, they're just trying to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is there anything that uh, a venue has ever done for you or your band that's just outstanding? Like, Oh, my God. You? If you yeah. just buy us pizza... Yeah. <laughs> if you just get us pizza, we'll be happy. Like yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because you're on tour. Yeah. And you're like, I'm just hungry. Yeah, we're just hungry. Uh, uh, buy us beer, we'll love you forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, just yeah, yeah. I don't know. Pretty much every venue I've been to has been really accommodating for us. Like, um, we never really mess with riders or anything like that. Mm-hmm. We're pretty easy to please. Pretty low profile. We'll you don't need your kinda... full thing of green M and M's. No, no, yeah, we don't, we don't mess with that stuff. That's, that's pretty extra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, s- stay humble, mm-hmm. too. That's a big one as well. Like, people don't like a braggart. Right. Yeah. Like, we get it. You play music, it's cool. But there are a lot of people who do a lot of other cool Same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, yeah. People are just cool, and they do a lot of cool stuff. And so, like, one thing's not inherently better than the other. So is there something that sticks out on uh, your solo shows or your band shows that's, you know, something that people could expect from your shows that they wouldn't with others? They wouldn't get from another yeah. show? Yeah, from another band. Me. <laughs> you know, you know. No. Uh... <laughs> is there something about your book? Is there something, you know, you were talking about you, you really make in a show? Uh, well, we started using, well, right before everything, we started trying to take into account, like, okay, how do we make this an experience for people? Mm -hmm. Like, we want to make it an experience. We don't want to just make it, like, a party with music. We want to, like, have, have, you know, you watch an incredible show. Like, what do you, what do you think of an incredible show? Mm -hmm. Like, you think a cool light show. You think of cool props. You think of, you know, even, like, theater, watching theater. There's a story that's being acted out you know people are into the things that they're doing if you're standing up on stage and you're not really moving around you're not really getting into the music can you expect other people to get into the music can you expect other people to move around so it's like you have to be the life of the party you got to get people comfortable and like and be fun like people just want to have fun they're getting away from their shit lives you know and coming to see some live music and it's like i gotta make people forget about all the crappy stuff that's happening outside of the doors so that's what I'd like to offer you. I don't know if I can. I really am trying. Uh, but yeah, I think that's what our shows have to offer. Like comfort and a safe place for people to hang out and be themselves. Mm, that's, that sounds 
Pretty cool. So um, I want to ask you just some random questions now, because let's get off gear from the music a little bit. So if you were a celebrity for one day, what is the first thing you would do? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the first thing I would do? You could do anything. I don't know. My life probably wouldn't change too much if I had some sort of celebrity status. I'm a pretty... I'm a pretty to myself person. I'm I'm fairly introverted uh, until I have to not be. Um, I've developed a lot of interpersonal skills just by doing the band stuff for so long and meeting all these different people. Um, man, uh, little tangent before I get to the yeah. answer that question. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of my favorite things was. Um, like with the inclusivity, there was like, I remember being at a show and like seeing these, like this group of guys that were like kind of like staring at me and I was like standing over by the table and like every time at the end of a show, I'm like, hey, if you want to come talk to me, just come talk to me. Like, please, please come talk to me. Like, I want to meet you. I want to talk to you. I want to get to know you. Um, and uh, I, I went up to them. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't wait for them to come to me because I could tell that they wanted to come talk to me, but they didn't feel comfortable doing so. So I was like, hey guys, like what's going on? Like, what are your names? What do you guys do? Like, what are you interested in? Like, why did you come? You know, uh, and then like later I received a comment, like we received a comment on like a video or something and it was like, I love these guys. They'll literally talk to anybody. And, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, that just makes me happy. Aww. Yeah, it makes me happy that people, like, first and foremost, I, I could, I could, like, give two cents about the music being incredible or like the show being incredible. I want people to know that we care about them and that yeah. we're genuine people and like this is just an avenue for us to, you know, make all of that happen. Right. And like. Yeah, yeah, so but you just so made I guess day, though. yeah, and that that felt really nice. Like yeah. I'm I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do that, yeah. and I think that with celebrity status, that probably rings in true as well. So I don't know. I'd probably go about my day the same as any, and I then just talk to people, and just talk and to make people. Day. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah, yeah, that would be my ideal. I don't mind like taking pictures or yeah. like yeah, stop me. I I don't yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm a simple man. <laughs> <laughs> so, second question: um, If you could make up one law that everybody had to follow, what would it be? Oof. Hmm. I would say. Just be nice. You gotta be nice. <laughs> It's the law, guys. It's the law. Got to be nice. Gotta be nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, especially with all the the turmoil that's happening currently. There's yeah. a lot of divisiveness and and everything. Um, people people like to think that words don't hold as much power as they do, mm -hmm. and I I agree with that to some degree. It depends on the person and the words. But I also think that, you know, even the, the smallest thing, like think about how many times you've walked into a coffee shop or something or, or a store and someone's like, hey, you look really nice today. Mm -hmm. And then that just like makes the whole day, you know, it just like turns your entire day. Like if it could be the worst day ever and someone's like, you look great. And it's mm -hmm. like, wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like I needed that. And then like, you know, you get the, you get other folks who are you know, going through something of their own and, you know, we catch them on a bad day and they're just, just really yeah, just angry and mean and then like, yeah, yeah, just like, just like tears you down. Like, that's rough. Yeah. So new law, everybody new law. be nice. Everybody yes. be nice. Just yes. be nice. Okay, so final <laughs> random question. Uh, where is your, where do you like going most to be at peace? Hmm. You know, out in nature, would it be the lake, the mountains or the river? Hmm. I I've been to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I really like the mountains a lot. Um, I like beaches a whole lot too. But beaches are a little more uncomfortable because I, there's a bunch of people around, mm -hmm. a little less secluded. Um, I'd probably say mountains. I really like the mountains. Yeah, I like Colorado a lot. 
Guess where I'm from. Yeah. <laughs> oh, where from? Boulder. Boulder. I have a friend that lives in Boulder. Oh, I just went and visited him, like, right before all this stuff happened. So, mountains, though, you would go there. I would go to the mountains. Where you're at, these. Mm hmm. I love that. Well, is there any other advice that you could give to um, inspiring <sighs> musicians out there? It's going to be really hard. It's going to be hard. And everybody's path is completely different. And you just got to figure out what that path is. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm even still figuring out what mine is. I, I, if you asked me like three years ago where I think I would be, I would have no answer for you. You know, I just, which is probably pretty irresponsible of me, <laughs> but I also don't feel like I'd be where I'm at if I didn't have that mm -hmm. as a, as a personality trait too. So yeah, just thought and effort go really, really far. Mm -hmm. So anything that you're going to do, do it as best as you can and ask people for help. Don't be afraid to ask people for help because people are usually really, really willing and able to help. Um, don't let your pride get in the way. Don't think you're too big for your britches because you're never going to be too big for your britches. Right. Um, yeah, stay grounded, keep grinding. Awesome. Well, do you have any shows coming up? You solo or your band? Not currently. Um, we're kind of laying low, just writing stuff. Like, I have, this is a really uncomfortable topic for me to, mm -hmm. to talk about, but um, because, like, I've been living in this weird cognitive dissonance through this whole period. Because everything that I've dedicated my life to, I've been told that I can't do, you know. Um, and, you know, I've also not wanted to do. Because, say, say I'm, if I'm working a show, no one's going to come see me run sound. But if I'm playing a show, my fans will hopefully <laughs> come and see me. Um, and, like, the thought of potentially getting someone, you know deathly ill from that is not a burden that I'd like to bear. Right. So I'm just waiting until it's fine. You know, like I don't want to push the envelope. Like I don't, and, and even like working shows, there's the cognitive dissonance there too, because it's like, I am technically inhibiting it as well because I'm working it, but it's also like my living. Like right. I wouldn't be able to live if I didn't work. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there's, it's, I feel like a hypocrite and it's it's just not a great time yeah 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 yeah. I <laughs> yeah yeah it's a weird it's a weird spot and i would love for it to just be done said yeah, and done with so i'm go back to yeah i'm able to invite everybody out <laughs> yes everybody come everybody have a good time <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah um i i'm hoping that with the rollout of all these vaccines mm -hmm. um and yeah. Please, please get the vaccine, please. Um, uh, and just everybody's m more self-conscious seemingly about their personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't get sick this year. This is the first year I haven't gotten sick. Yay. Yeah, uh, yeah, crazy. Yay. Yeah, and which is wild because I'm usually the first person to get sick. Uh, on every tour that we've gone on, like until recently, like I had always gotten sick, and then the last tour that we went on, uh, everybody else got sick except for me. Wow. Yeah, and we wow. were in the tiny van together, and I was like, how the heck did I not get sick? Wow. Yeah, wild. So, uh, where can they find you on the interwebs? Um, you can find me uh, at underscore vivid music underscore that's my at for twitter instagram um and tiktok uh which i've been putting a lot of time into i'm kind of addicted to tiktok now. yes I know. It's so dangerous. <sighs> uh and then uh, i have a facebook page uh just vivid yeah the, the facebook page just called vivid or... yes uh i have one song out from vivid uh and then we've got like a whole like slew of music under lo and behold on, right on. on all platforms. It should be on like Apple Music and Spotify and all that stuff. All the platforms. Yeah, all of them. So let's get to your last song and we'll have it play out. Tell me a little bit about that one. Yes. Uh, so 
uh, another one of my huge influences is Stevie Wonder. Uh -huh. um, it's just an incredible artist. And whenever I was, actually whenever I was on the cruise, I got to go to Hitsville, USA, um, which is in Detroit. And that is where all of the Motown music was created. And Stevie grew up. Uh, and uh, it was cool seeing that operation, you know, because, uh, do we have to cut soon? Do we need to cut soon? Keep going. Okay. Uh, it, it was <laughs> no, cool. Yeah. It was cool seeing that operation. And it was just a house that Gordy Berry had bought. And all of these different artists lived really close. And he left the back door open. Anytime they wanted to come record, they could just come record, whether day or night. Um, Stevie basically lived there. Um, uh, Barry Gordy and his family lived in the top part of the house, and a cool part when you go into it, you see Barry Gordy, his family was extremely business oriented, and he had a bunch of siblings, and their parents both owned businesses, and they ran their family kind of like a business. So they, they would work, like all the kids would work, and then they would put a portion of all of their earnings into a savings account, and then if they wanted to start a business venture, then they would have to come up with a business plan, present that to the family, and then the family would either sign off on that or not sign off on that. Wow. So they, And then they would write up a contract, yeah. and then for whatever amount of money it was, and Bill, Barry Gordy has his family's contract for the $800 to start Motown. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That yeah, Motown is Records. So cool. So he's got that framed up in the house. Yeah. You can walk through and see everything. And yeah, that 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 was so cool to see. But yeah, I love Stevie, and uh, this was yeah yeah. I I just wanted to play one of his songs. Oh wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being part of the show, and I'm looking forward to seeing you. You know, play out and about when that time comes. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much but, for having me. Yeah, I'll have you back another time and. Um, but guys, thanks so much for watching, and we're going to get to that last song, and just head out. Catch us next time. Bye. <laughs>